Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and welcome to the ninth Q&A session. I'm sorry that I didn't uh, post it uh, on Friday or Saturday and as I said, I think so Monday is a good day for posting this Q&A and I've got quite a few questions again. So let's get on with the same. And the first one is from the Para Warrior. He asks us, hey Ranjit, I have an i7 2670QM CPU. That's a mobile uh, Sandy Bridge processor on my HP DV6. It goes to 85 degrees centigrade after an hour of gaming. I'm worried if it will cause any problems later on. Can I continue to play games at this temperature? Can laptop components handle uh, such high temperatures? Thank you. The thing is that uh, uh, certainly 85 degrees centigrade is a bit high to my liking. And in long term, I do not want uh, my PC uh, processor to go that high. I strongly suggest that you go for a laptop cooler, something like that, that will elevate your laptop a little bit and it also has fans below that will uh, let out the heat. Again, don't worry. Technically speaking, your CPU will not fry because all modern CPUs have a thermal uh, cutoff. If the temperature goes beyond a certain point, the CPU will shut off automatically. But again, uh, consistently playing games at this high temperature is definitely not a good idea and your battery life will also seriously get affected because such high temperatures are not good for the battery. And the next question is from Viponi and asks us, Hi, could you please review the Xperia U? Is Windows Phone having a good browsing experience without Adobe Flash? And please suggest a phone either Android or Windows around 15,000 and is Xperia U going to be priced around Rs. 15,000 or not? Uh, the first thing is uh, regarding Xperia U, it hasn't been launched yet and I don't know if I'm going to review this or not. Let me talk a little bit about the browsing experience on Windows Mobile. It is pretty good again, but it won't play Flash as you have mentioned. And for around 15,000, I think so this uh, Samsung Omia W is a Windows Mobile phone and that's a pretty good phone. Uh, for uh, 15,000 for Android right now, we don't have any great phones. Uh, I would uh, suggest that you go up to about 17,000 and buy the HTC Neo V. That's a good Android phone and that comes with ICS. And one more thing I want to share is that I am uh, lately getting a lot of requests to review these Android phones and I have been doing that for the past two months but going forward I won't be reviewing all the Android phones that I get because simply speaking there are too many uh, phones that are being released and I feel I'm spending a lot of my time instead of uh, uh, creating tech related videos etc just reviewing phones and I don't want to just review phones I want to talk about technology related uh, things and stuff so moving forward I'll be reviewing uh, phones but not all of them uh, the next question comes from GND Geek and he asks us, Hey Rajit, uh, where to get micro SIM? How is it different from a regular SIM? Actually, uh, the micro SIM is nothing but if you take a regular SIM, you can cut it and get a micro SIM. I actually have uh, this uh, micro SIM cutter and you can just place a SIM here and you just, it's like a stapler and you press it and the micro SIM comes out. You can, uh, you don't need to buy this. You can just go to any uh, local mobile shop and they'll charge you around 25 rupees and cut your regular SIM to a micro SIM. Also, you can go to your mobile provider and ask for a mobile uh, micro SIM if you would like. The next question is from uh, John Smith and he asks us, what is the difference between the graphic card interface memory DDR3 and DDR5? Again, DDR5 is much faster and if I'm buying a new graphic card, I'll most probably prefer to go with the DDR5. Next question is from Maximus and he asks, Hey Ranjit, your videos are great. Thank you. I play uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 on Xbox Live and I notice that other players who are having a better connection than me win more because of the weak ping. I have a Airtel broadband connection 4 Mbps but still I don't get a good ping. Uh, and he also asked one more question but first I'm going to answer this one. Uh, the thing is that as you're using the ATL broadband connection, most probably this is ADSL connection. And generally with the ADSL connection, you won't get the best pings. For the best pings, you need a fiber connection or something like that. Again, uh, uh, it depends upon your routing and what kind of a modem also you're using. So again, uh, there is nothing much that you can do to improve your pings. It is uh, your ISP's problem. Generally, I, I was also using an ADSL connection I, and I used to get bad pings, but I have moved to a fiber now and the pings are a lot better. So again, opt for something like a fiber connection or a metro ethernet. Next thing is, 
I read somewhere uh, that I can improve my online gaming by doing port forwarding and kindly uh, take up this question in the next question. Q&A session. Yes, generally speaking, uh, the NAT on your router can affect the gaming a little bit. What you can do is you can do port forwarding or you can do a simple thing like uh, in your router, there should be a setting called DMS, that's demilitarized zone. And what I suggest is uh, set your Xbox to a static IP and put that in the DMS zone. That should help it a little bit if you're getting NAT issues. Next question is from uh, Easy to Cool, and he asks us, "My dad is planning to buy a BlackBerry. Please suggest two or three phones between uh, rupees twenty to twenty-five thousand. Thanks." Uh, Easy to Cool. The thing is that I do not review BlackBerry phones, and I do not even follow the same. So I am not in a position to give you an advice. But I am sure a lot of uh, our users might be using the BlackBerry. So please uh, post your suggestions in the comments below. Next question is from Abhim, and he asks us. Please suggest me a cheapest Android phone that comes preloaded with Android ICS. As of today, I think so. The cheapest Android phone that comes preloaded with ICS is the HTC One uh, V, and uh, it's a it's a good phone. It sells for around uh, about seventeen thousand or so. Uh, the next question comes from Sarvesh, and he asks us, uh, which is the best Mac-like looking Linux distro, and What's the difference between a Kindle app and a Kindle reader? Uh, the first thing is, I haven't been lately installing a lot of Linux distros, so I am a little bit clueless regarding the same. I have just uh, installed recently Ubuntu. So if any of you guys are uh, installing a lot of Linux distro, please uh, let us know which is the uh, best Mac looking like Linux distro that you have found. And for the second question, what's the difference between a Kindle app and a Kindle reader? Kindle app is just a software. You can install it on an iPad, even on an Android phone or a, a Android tablet. But Kindle Reader is a hardware device, and it uses the e-ink. You can actually read all the Kindle Kindle books using a Kindle app. But if you want the complete Amazon experience and the e-book experience, the Kindle Reader is for you. The next question is from Gunit Ji, and he asks us, "I want to buy an Android phone. My budget is rupees nine thousand for internet browsing, sounds, video, social networking, gaming, etc. Which brand is better, Samsung or, H or HTC?" Uh, the thing is that I can't comment on which brand is better, Samsung or, H or HTC. But for nine thousand uh, rupees, look at this HTC Explorer. That's a decent phone, but don't expect a lot with that phone. It is a good phone for that price. And the next question comes from Q J Ben, and he asks us, "I want to buy a Wi-Fi router N three hundred, but there are two models. That is the ADSL plus router and just the router. Which one should I buy? I'll be using a MTNL broadband telephone line to connect the same. And there's another second part of the question to use with one PC, one laptop, and three uh, mobiles. My on my motherboard there are SATA six GBS GB ports and SATA three gigabit port." Which one should I connect my hard drive? Thank you in advance. Your videos are awesome. Thank you. Uh, the first part of the question is: as you're using an MTNL connection and you're going to use it for the telephone line, you need an ADSL uh, type of uh, router. Uh, so go with that. Personally, I do not like ADSL type of routers because with most of these uh, ISPs like MTNL, Airtel, etc., they already provide you with the uh, modem. Uh, and I generally like to connect that modem to a plain, uh, what do you say, uh, Wi-Fi router. Because going forward, in, let's say in two or three years, most of the connections will move to Ethernet or fiber. Where, uh, if you buy this ADSL routers, they'll be obsolete. Again, but for your current needs, as of now, go for the ADSL uh, plus router model. For the second part of the question, if you're using just a normal hard drive. You can connect it to uh, anything like a SATA uh, three gigabit port or a six gigabit port. It won't matter because your hard drive cannot even reach those six uh, GB per second theoretical speed. But if you're going to use a SSD, then certainly I would say that connect it to the six gigabit port. The next question comes from Sinu, and he asks us, "I love your videos, and my question is, do you use Hackintosh as your main desktop or your iMac?" The thing is that I am, I've been lately using a, uh, my Hackintosh a lot, and the only reason I'm using that is for video editing. If it was not for the video editing, I would have been using my iMac. And I also use my MacBook Air a lot. In fact, the video that you are seeing right now, the uh, video feed is being captured on the MacBook Air. 
and uh, the next question is from Nihar and he asks us I am an animation student I need to buy a graphic card by which I can run my software like Maya uh, 3d max etc smoothly in the range of rupees 10,000 to 13,000 and thumbs up for each of your videos thank you Nihar the thing is that uh, I don't know about Maya but 3d max certainly uh, takes advantage of CUDA so I would suggest that go with the NVIDIA based graphic card and for your range I think so you should get uh, the 560 Ti or something like that again I'm not using these uh, 3d animation softwares a lot so just check uh, their, their relative forums to get the best advice and the next question comes from Abhi the star and he asks us I recently saw that Sony is saying that the ICS may not be good for 2011 Xperia series because it consumes more RAM than gingerbread and ICS might uh, hang the devices so I want your suggestion should I upgrade my Xperia Neo V to ICS or not thanks in advance yes Abhi I also read this uh, detailed article by Sony regarding uh, the ICS on the older phones the thing is that many of the older phones uh, that Sony had released in 2011 come with just 512 MB of RAM and the issue with ICS I agree is that it consumes a lot more RAM and also uh, due to the way ICS works all the what do you say UI etc is handled by the graphic processor it also consumes a little bit more battery life so certainly I would say that if you are currently happy with your gingerbread I won't say that you go ahead and upgrade to the ICS frankly speaking I didn't find ICS that groundbreaking so what I would say is that if you're currently using a lot of heavy RAM related apps on your phones I would not suggest that you jump to the ICS right away so uh, the simple thing is that if you are currently happy with your Xperia Neo V I would say that you stick with gingerbread and the next question comes from Priyanka and he asks us uh, can we change a normal hard drive on a laptop with SSD and can the hard drive that is removed be used as an external USB hard drive or is there any other way of uh, using the removed hard drive uh, with the same machine yes actually you can easily uh, change the normal hard drive on your laptop with an ssd and also you can use the hard drive that you have removed uh, from the uh, and use it like an external portable hard drive for example you get kits like this for example this is the hyper x ssd upgrade kit and with this kit actually you get a adapter let me check it out yes this is actually the adapter that kingston has given and what you can do is the hard drive that you have taken out from your laptop you can attach here and use it as a portable hard drive so again look at the ssd that you are buying and look for something like these these are known as the upgrade packs so i hope uh, this answers your question the last question is from the sonu and he asked us hey ranjit i want to know which is the best internet security antivirus for windows pc and which one do you use Frankly speaking, uh, uh, the Sonu, I do not use Windows as my primary OS. I use it a little bit and I have been using the Avast antivirus for a while, for almost four years now and I never had an issue. But I've also heard Kaspersky is very good and the new Norton uh, uh, security suit is also really, really nice. But again, uh, I think so our users will be in a better position to answer this question because Windows is not my primary OS. So th these were the questions for the ninth Q&A session. If you would uh, like that I answer some of your tech related questions in the next Q&A session, please post them uh, below in the uh, comment section and start it with the Q&A tag so that I know that I need to include this in the next Q&A session. I hope you found this Q&A session helpful. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and I hope to see you in my next video.